What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, well, I wanted to hop on here tonight and talk about a little bit of theory, I guess, some strategy, and, and just really at the way the state of the world is right now, or at least our country currently, and how nobody really knows what's about to happen. Like, it seems like we're about to have a weird season in the NFL here and, and across college. So I kind of wanted to talk about the 2020 rookie picks down the line and then you know maybe a little chatter about what you're thinking about the 2021 rookie picks uh to cap this to end this thing so my general thoughts are kind of what we talked about with Vaughn in one of our last videos is just that you know you're not going to have a whole lot of off season like you normally would you, they say you're going to have some sort of a training camp but who knows exactly what that is a couple of weeks like a lot of these guys might not get out there and acquainted with their offenses you know, and it's already tough being a rookie. A lot of the times it usually have a, has a curve regardless. Like you either come in and start hot and they talk about the rookie wall or it takes you a while to get rolling. Um, and it just seems like it could be even harder this season for some of these guys to get rolling. Um, and kind of the thought was is maybe you could be selling off some of your later 20, 2020 first and seconds and buying some veterans and then kind of circling the wagons back around middle of the season when people's are like what's going on with my guys here i think a dynasty owner in a lot of leagues is like his patience is his worst uh attribute in a lot there's always that there's at least two or three of them in every league where somebody just is just impatient about everything and probably more realistically sure. um so, so I, to specify you're talking about like maybe after the first group of guys like like the you, you're talking about later first this right. year? Right. In a, in a non-super flex league, like, I, I kind of want the top three, and my top three would be Taylor, um, Clyde Edwards, and Dobbins. And knowing Dobbins, you're probably going to be waiting a little bit regardless, but I'm fine with that because I really like him. Um, and then after that, it's kind of up to you. Where do you draw the line of where you don't really, you know, where you are like, all right, here's where – maybe I would be willing to kind of sell something off here. I'm, if you like a guy, take him. This is a great class. There's all sorts of depth and all kinds of things. But I guess what I'm saying is it just really might start slower than usual because, you know, we talked about it with Vaughn last night. Everyone loves him right now, but he might not see a snap with Tom Brady until four weeks before they're about to go in and do their – actually start playing a game. Like, that could be a realistic thing that happens. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you talk about patience. I mean, last year in one of our FFPC leagues, a couple weeks into season, somebody dropped Noah Fant, and they had been, a, you know, a couple months before that because FFPC has early rookie drafts. They took him in the first round. You draft Noah Fant in the first round, you dropped him a couple weeks into season, and somebody spent a lot of money on their fab to buy him. That's just – that's what happens in Dynasty. Patience Expecting is just – Expecting a rookie tight end to come out and crush it like that. What an idiot. Well, and, and this is not – these are leagues that, you know, it's 250 bucks or, or over in the FF – when we talk about the FFPC, that those are the leagues that we're in. It's 250 or, or above. I'm not exactly sure which one that was, but I remember saying – you saying that Noah Fant got dropped, and it's just like – so it's not, it's not just $20 league, MFL 10s or whatever, like, you know. And it, just because you're playing in a higher dollar league doesn't mean everybody knows what you're – what they're doing but it definitely makes you a little sweatier when you're making trades yeah you expect it to be a little bit more competitive right um so that's that's one of the things that Kate, we have the ffpc drafts coming up rookie drafts and we've been talking a lot casey and i've been talking a lot about our you know hey we're this team has this pick in this range what are we looking for this team has these couple picks and these in this range what are we looking for and the thing that we kept circling back to was this you have to take into account just what Casey just now said. This is the – we just had a really cool rookie draft, like NFL draft, that we got to see on the computer, and I thought it was awesome. Um, but after this, everything's not going to be awesome for these rookies. Right. Um, it's, you know, you can't, you can't Skype football practice you, or, you know, whatever the kids call it these days. Right. You can't Zoom football practice. You can't FaceTime football practice. That ain't hey, how it works. Get, get your hands up. You got to get your pad level. You're not, you're not getting it. It's not going to work like that. So like I'm telling this, you through Zoom how to do football. 
it ain't gonna work so uh, just like what what you guys were talking about with vaughn in the in the video you made the other night when i couldn't make it i, I, I agree with a lot what you were saying uh, you know you have and, and and casey just said something too like if you have a guy and you love your guy take him i'm not telling you to not take right. ryan edwards in the early second round but what i want to tell you is there's gonna be a lot of rookies whose name you know who's who you were excited about either pre combine post combine or both. And they, especially it's always tough for rookie wide receivers to begin with for the most part. I mean, it's, it's, it's a learning curve and, and, and we've been saying it for years. If the, if the a really good rookie wide receiver gets into a spot, he's so dependent on so many other variables for the ball to get to him to, for him, for him to do what he does. Right. There's so many steps that have to go right for him, the rook for the wide receiver to get the ball. Um, there's there's going to be really 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 talented wide receivers that catch 25 passes this year. I don't know which ones they're going to be yet. Right. They're going to be really talented wide receivers that catch 60 passes, and they're and they're going to be really good flashy ones, and they're right. going to look good. And there's going to be a wide receiver that gets out of this class, and you're like, oh, and he's and he's a third round startup pick like AJ Brown. I don't know which one that's going to be. I'm right. So, but if odds are, and by the averages, more than likely you're going to be to get more. Most of these rookies are going to be cheaper towards the end of the season than they are in your rookie draft. And right. that's, that's really what we wanted to talk about was, you know, get in Clyde Edwards, probably not going to be any cheaper. I personally don't think Jonathan Taylor is going to get any cheaper. Yeah. I do think if the wrong person, like if, if, Do, if Dobbins slips to, you know, one, five, one, six, that person takes Dobbins cause he's on the top of their name. They're listed. They brought the, uh, from the gas station magazine. They well, bought, maybe don't love them. They, they don't love him like they should. They don't know to love him. They just like, well, this is the other rookie running back. I got to take him. And they take him. And then Mark Ingram's tearing it up for a couple of weeks because that's what they do in Baltimore. Then maybe you'd be able to get Mark Dobbins on. Yeah. But if Dobbins gets drafted at 1 3, potentially that person's drafted. People are because holding on him. a little tighter. They still could be going off of somebody's list. They don't right. know why they're drafting Dobbins just because that yeah. list told them to. But there's a chance you might get Dobbins cheaper. Yeah. Um, but that's that's just kind of where I'm at on this. And, yeah. and I can see that, like holding on to those top picks, right? I, I'm I'm with you on on maybe like the top five. But I mean, I can see like you made a point, Casey, about uh, Jonathan Taylor. They got a good guy in Mac. There, he's not going like he's there for this season. He already he knows, knows the playbook. System. He knows the playbook. He could get way more run than Jonathan Taylor off the rip. And the guy who took Taylor's like, oh, dang, man, he, he isn't that good. So maybe there is an opportunity for you there. I would still keep those picks, and I, I feel pretty good one through five. And then I, I really like CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson. But once you get past those, like, seven guys, I, I don't know if I should take – I don't know if I should be taking Rager or if I should be taking Judy or if I should take Mims or, like, if I, I you, like I'm, like, trying to figure these things out in, in, in these mocks that we've been doing. But, like, if you don't feel a certain t type of way about a guy and you're just trying to figure out who the best guy is, those are the type of players that are going to lose. You're going to, those are the type of dynasty players. They're going to lose faith in those guys easily because they weren't their guy. They just took them because yeah. they thought that's who they should take it. So they're going to, or at least one of those other seven guys they could lose faith in, you know, might not be the exact one that you were thinking of, but odds are one, a couple of those guys from one six to, to two six, you know, probably right. half of them. So if you could take like you those said. picks, if you could take your 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 one seven and your two seven and trade them for a veteran player like a, a Keenan Allen or or an Allen Robinson or somebody you know that's going to be good, you can probably come back and circle back to who you wanted to buy. Right. That's the point we're making later in the season when these guys have, haven't haven't figured it out and haven't been successful and people have lost patience because that's what you they did. Gamble a little bit with on the situation being a lot different than something we might not ever see again and right. haven't really seen. And you could gamble and maybe try, you're not, it's never a terrible idea to get rid of the, the rookie and get the veteran anyway. Like it might, it might in two years, you might be like, damn, I, I, I should have had that guy. But like, you still might have Robert Woods who scored really good fantasy points for you for the next two years. I, you know, whatever. I'm just, but you could yeah. get a veteran and circle back around with those right. 2021 picks or, or another guy and swoop in there and grab one of these guys that you like that is maybe underperforming and just know that it was an odd situation and this offseason and rookies take a little while 
to develop right. regardless. Bobby's another great example of a, of a veteran you could go buy with one of these late first round picks. And and if you if you like, this is a great class. These dudes are really really good, especially the top, you know, 16, 20 guys. I right. feel really good about them. And so if you like one and you want to keep your pick and make it, and you ha you're able to have patience, mm -hmm. go for it. But if you're not yeah. quite sure and and you don't want to play that game, then I'd be all for you know yeah. discounting these picks a little bit and and selling them. And trying to get some veteran, and then and then coming back. Right. Nobody thought they were going to be able to get some of these stocks that they got a couple of months ago for super cheap. But all of a sudden, some wild shit happened, and it dipped down, and you were able to scoop in there and get something that maybe you weren't able to get into before. And you oh, know, no doubt, this whole virus thing. Could, it's I'm not. You might get halfway through the season and then be see an unexpected dip in some values because these guys aren't on the field because of this circumstance from a couple months ago perfect analogy perfect analogy i i texted my sister my sister's my cpa and i texted her i said i'm about to put a sizable amount of money in e-trade i know i've been talking about this for three years but i'm about to put a sizable amount of money in e-trade right now because the wealthy people are going to make money when the stock market goes down i'm not wealthy but if i don't do something like this i'll i'm i'll regret regret it for the rest of my you, life you're basically playing a little bit more high skin in the game fantasy football you know sure, just, sure. <laughs> you know uh, oh, I just no hadn't doubt. gotten super into it because I know if I do, it's going to be one more thing that really just consumes my life about reading just all sorts of things. I think I might be buying some DraftKings here shortly on the next dip down. Get into it, man. I got I turned my 15 into 21 already. Boom. Love well, it. Well, let's let's get into the 21. Let's get into the 21 picks here and finish this video off. Um, so obviously, college season again. Might not happen. There's a chance that it couldn't happen or a really weird condensed version of it happens. And we know that we know some of the top guys, but we also know the Clyde Edwards of the, of the world and the Joe Burrows. Joe Burrow would have been a who knows, fourth round, fifth round, third round pick. Like Clyde Edwards Delaire, third round, fourth round, maybe not even drafted flash. Who knows? Like, but then you get a year of football and you got you see it for a year and now you have all these names in your mouth. If you're not a, a staunch Debbie guy who's really super into it. You may not know these guys, and even by, even if you do, by the end of it, that list could have flipped from top to bottom quite easily. It always does, um, not always, so but it does. It does a lot. The idea that you you know there's still some higher end prospects that you know you got your Chuba Hubbards and and your ETNs um, and ETNs the, and, and the other and wide receiver Flex, from LSU. Have, yeah, Ch Jamar Chase and you'll Jamar have Chase, you'll have it. Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, there'll Justin be some Fields. super flex. Yeah. So, that, you know, you'll know some of the heavy hitters on the top end. So, uh, but you might not get a great look at, at some of these, some of this other talent. So this might be a really weird rookie draft coming up in 2021 pick. What are your thoughts about that? Well, to, uh, yeah, I'm a, this, this kind of pairs perfectly with what I didn't I, I jumped out of the last conversation and I, I just tangented it right into the stock market. But like say let's let's say the top six of your rookie draft goes C D Lamb and five running backs, right? And I'm sitting mm -hmm. there, I'm looking at Jerry Judy and I'm thinking, I really like Jerry Judy, but just what I was talking about earlier with wide receivers, like there's no chance that that Drew Locke can take care of Jerry Judy, Noah Fant, and Cortland. Um, Cortland. And then and, Hamler on top of you know, not saying that Hamler's anything special, but he's really fast and Ham you know. Hamler makes it – I think he makes it easier on everybody because you run straight down the field and stretch that defense out. Sure. Maybe it is easier for these guys. But, I mean – And Drew, he's, like a slot, he's a slot guy, right? So, he might even, like, get I, more I mean, attention from Drew Locke because he's open. So, so I, I there's – I I would love to see Jerry Judy with a veteran quarterback that I know is probably going to pass for 4,500 yards. That so, You know, like, give me, mm -hmm. give me Ben Roethlisberger throwing to Jerry Judy. But right. Drew Locke, I don't know anything about Drew Locke. I know that he, he never won big games in college. He he, he beat up yeah. on all the little schools. He had but a he, decent he, stretch at the end of the year. And he had a decent last stretch year. at the end of the year, you know. So but, but so did um uh Mitchell Trubisky the, the year before that. And he faced right. planted this year, you know. So like I'm I'm if I'm sitting there at one seven, I'm I'll be more than happy to trade back the two one, two, 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 three, get that twenty twenty one first you were just now talking about, or a good veteran, and then take you know, Pittman or Brian Edwards or somebody who's not necessarily talked about on the same level as Jerry Judy, but right. would probably in a position to be their team's number one receiver in, in the next year. Quickly. You know, and, and if not sooner. And, um, you know, and, and you've got Jerry Judy may live on as the potential. This, you know, he, he's a great separator and he's a great route runner. But if you're maybe the Broncos 
they're in quarterback. Maybe they're looking for – maybe they got problems in the next – maybe Locke's awesome. Maybe, so maybe he's just quarterback pur- purgatory for two, or, three, four more years. Or maybe he's good, but like, right. like a good quarterback doesn't necessarily carry fantasy assets. Doesn't carry as, four assets, and, and they they're going to run the Gordon ball. Too. They got Melvin Gordon and Phil Lindsay. Exactly, Lindsay's. exactly. So, it, so now you take me into my 2021 picks. Like, like right. you're saying, there's a handful of if, – if we don't have a college season, and I put that at a coin flip right now, if there's a 50-50 chance that we don't have a, coin, a college season, I, if I have my 21 – 2021 pick and if i'm if you there's a couple ways you got to look at it if you got a ffpc league and you play for the top pick and you could easily you could fall out if you're not in the playoffs and you don't automatically get like you know the one one or the one six or whatever you got to play for it things are kind of throw that up in the air but if you're in a if you're in a regular dynasty league and you know there's no chance you're a sub 500 team you got a really good team you know you got a couple of julio joneses on your team and some alva kamaras you're about to you're, you're going to be a good team right there's so, a really good chance that you're a good. There's team. a good decent chance team. you're about to be a good decent team. I will, I have no problem discounting my first one, my twenty with twenty one first somehow, and 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 sooner than later before everybody figures out your this before this becomes a popular topic. Right, that's the situation because in two or three months when you're like, oh well, we're not gonna have college football. And maybe, maybe you should maybe, sell your twenty twenty one pick. Maybe you huh? should sell your twenty twenty one pick. Or so or we play games of college football and some you know wacky condensed version of you know it just might not be the same right well like you said i mean if, if we don't have last year's season we don't really hardly know who Clyde edwards hilarious is right you know um we knew who Ta- jonathan taylor was but we probably didn't know much about Clyde edwards hilarious before last season um so that's the kind of that's that's kind of what i'm looking at if you know if, if you have if super flex obviously your first rounds off that much deeper and so your first round picks are more valuable in a super flex than they are in one quarterback league. The, the one five is, you know, more valuable. The one seven is one more valuable. That's how it works. But if you're, that's, that's how I'm playing it. I'm looking at, if I got a team that's more than likely going to have the one eight, one nine, one ten next year in a rookie draft, or if I get lucky and it things don't work like I want them, I got the one twelve because I won the championship. I'm willing to mark yeah. that thing down, put it on the clearance rack a little bit and try to use it for this year because, again, this is a fun class. Like you said, Jay Wayne, if, if you haven't already had your rookie draft anyway, I'm, I'll, be, I'll mark that 2021 first down and on a contending team and just try to get another one of these guys who I know is really, really good. Now, next year, if, things, if, if we did have a college season or if we had two-thirds of a college season and we're like, okay, well, now we got another 20 guys that are awesome, you know what, maybe, I'm, I, maybe, maybe it didn't work out in your favor or right. you, you gave up some value. It's called hedging your bet. You know, I, right now you don't really know how it's going to work out. And how many times – I've been around sports betting for a long, long time. I know a lot of people that's been around it a lot more than me, got into it in college. I'm 36 now, so I've been around it for 18 years. And almost every time, if you bet that Monday night was the closing out of the par- parlay, somebody had four or five team parlay going, almost every time they say, I wish I would have hedged. <laughs> yeah. Almost every time. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Sometimes they're like, man, I'm glad I didn't hedge. I made all that money. But almost every time they're like, oh, I should have hedged. So that's all I'm saying. It's just like, you know what? If you put all this uncertainty, you know, maybe you hedge your bet on some of these 2021s or, or you know, even, and then or in, in addition to pair that up, take advantage of the 2020 rookie draft fever. You know, if you're in the 1-8, 1-9, 10 range and you're not, I mean, everybody's in love with Justin Jefferson at this point. But mm-hmm. if the Minnesota draft spot doesn't make you all warm and fuzzy and maybe, maybe he crushes from the get-go, but you know they want to run the ball. You know they want to – run it with Dalvin and throw it to Dalvin and right you know so maybe Justin Jefferson's cheaper in four weeks and by week five of the season and you can pick him up then for you know 75 yeah. percent of what you'd have to pay for him now yeah I like kind of parlaying it together you can you, how you, you know you could move back and maybe pick up a 2021 first and maybe still get some veteran presence for you take those 2021 picks that you just got and then you know two weeks after the draft roll them over into more veterans or, or go buy one of the rookie picks that you really like that maybe you traded out of and just, you know, like you said, hedge your bet a little bit. You could get some 2021 backs as firepower and then, you know, go take those couple of firsts and try to go buy a veteran stud or, or buy that rookie that you missed out on because you traded back two or three times and acquired a bunch of stuff and another veteran. Right. So and here's, and if ahead, you, real quick, if you sell, if you sell all your 21, 2021 picks by hedging your, your bets or whatever, there's always a 2022 picks that you can come back in and get into that 2021. You got to get in. You could usually find a way to get in. Right. <laughs> and or 
just just to throw this out here, I don't know what you guys have heard, but uh, I know this class is supposed to be good and the next class is supposed to be good, but it's really all about it's the all about the twenty twenty two class. Yeah, the two two. It's that two two. That's the good one. Well, here's what I'm about to do. We got the rookie, the FFPC rookie draft start on Saturday. This Saturday, uh-huh. two days, day and a half. Um, I'm gonna try my one eights and my one sevens. Will probably I'm gonna try to make them become one twelves and two one two twos for 2021 first. And as soon as I get those 2021 first, I'm gonna try to trade them again. Right. That's exactly you know? yeah. Right. So I'm gonna try to use my mid first rounders this year that I have with my teams that made the playoffs and got bounced early. You yeah. Know? Uh, or you I'm, could try to get up into that top third of the draft, or, you know, one through. Sure, I'm trying to go three. forward, but if I can't go right. forward, I'm trying to go back. Right. And, you know, and, it, and the people that won't trade me, I, I'm trying my best. I've, try, I've sent offers all over the place to go from 1-7 to 1-2 and 1-8 to 1-2 and those types of leagues, and I'm getting, you know, stonewalled. But, yeah. the, but when, you know, if Dobbins is sitting there at 1-5, one 1-5's on the clock, all of a sudden I'll be offering pretty heavy to go from, from one seven to one five, I can't offer that right now. Right. I don't know who's got to see what's going on. I don't one five if Dobbins isn't there. Exactly. Yeah, so. I agree. All right. Well, good conversation about some fun speculation, but I, I, you know, I don't think it's something that really anybody's talking about too too much right now. And I think at some point there will be a lot of discussion, and it's just something to think about. So appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys like and subscribe and. Enjoy the content, and we'll we'll keep putting it out if you keep listening. So, and if you're mad, hit us hit us in the comments about it. Don't hit that thumbs down. I know you want to hit that <laughs> thumbs down, but uh, nah, we we really appreciate any kind of comment or feedback. It'll I greatly used, help us out. I used to be like mad about some thumbs downs, but then you go like you'll go watch like look at it like an iconic song, and they'll be like. 2300 thumbs down it's like you clicked on the song you started listening to it you everyone has pretty much consensus agreed this song's been awesome for 40 years and you're just nah, thumbs down get out of here stairway to heaven get out of here <laughs> like listen i'm not gonna go thumbsing up stairway to heaven it's a good song it's a little played out but like i'm not gonna go on there and be like thumbs down thumbs down Come on, get out of here it's just so salty anyway we'll see you next time